In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, I'm going to talk to you about the 10 essential items you'll need to become an insect collector. So the purpose of this episode is not to demonstrate how to use all of these tools, but to kind of give you an overview so you know what you need to purchase and get so that you can start collecting insects. This is not pinning and preservation type things, but these will help with those to a degree. The first thing I'm going to talk about are forceps. Um, these are a very nice tool for handling insects that might bite or sting you. These are soft touch forceps, which are great for picking up uh, fragile insects. So if I try to pick up a really tiny ant, it's not going to smash it. It's not too hard on them. You can also get ones that are harder and they have a better grip, but they're going to crush more things. So I just like these soft touch ones. These only run you about three or four bucks um, if you purchase them. The next tool I want to talk about is a hand lens. And basically it's almost like something that a jeweler would use. But for insects, it's great for trying to identify insects and look at them while you're out collecting. I really like it. I kind of keep one on my neck when I'm out scouting fields. This is a very helpful tool. It can give you different um, types of zooms. This one that I have is uh, 16 times. So if I'm trying to look at some aphids or other things, this is great for out in the field. So I really recommend this. You can get these for under 10 bucks if you're looking at the right places. The next thing I want to talk about is nets. I've just got a couple nets here. I'll show you really quick. Um, nets will cost you around 15, 20 bucks. Um, but once you actually pay for shipping, it can be quite, quite costly. I'd recommend just making your own. If you want to know about the different types of nets for insect collecting, you can check out the video that just popped up on the screen. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you is kill jars. You can make your own kill jar which is composed of two parts. It is a jar and then there's a part here where you can charge it with chemicals such as nail polish remover, which is also an important tool. Basically what you do is you take the jar and you put some nail polish remover into there and that will charge it. And then you seal it off for a certain amount of time, probably about five minutes. That will charge up the container and what that means is that there will be toxic gases in there so that when you put insects in there, they'll be knocked down very quickly and they'll stop moving so that you can either sift through them or get them ready to start pinning. As for the pre-made ones, you can purchase these for a couple bucks. Um, again, it comes down to the shipping to me. I guess if you're ordering all of these things, then it's probably not going to be too bad. This one actually has a special charge container that you can screw on and off and then you can fill it up with the charge there and then the gases will seep out of it, which is pretty cool. So I definitely like these ones a lot and you can get them of all variety of sizes. And like I said, with the kill jars, you can make your own. If you wanna watch a video how to do that, check out the video that just popped up on the screen. As for the chemicals, like I just said that I was putting some in there, you wanna have some nail polish remover. The brand doesn't matter, but really the key thing is the acetone, um, which is a great chemical for producing gases that will knock insects down once they get inside of there. They just won't be able to breathe and you know after a few minutes they should stop moving and you should be able to start pinning them just immediately. You can get nail polish remover for a dollar. So I mean this is really cheap stuff, easy to get. If you don't really want to be doing killing rather than having a kill jar, it's good to just have a lot of containers I've found that pill bottles work really well, glass jars, except they're very breaky, so you want to be careful with that. And then my favorite thing is to just carry around little fry sauce or ketchup type cups. Those work really good for storing insects, because most of the time we're not going to have huge things, but you know if you're going to be getting butterflies and things, you might want to have a large glass jar you can catch them in. This way you don't have to actually kill them or knock them out but um, I always have a lot of these with me wherever I go because you never know when you're gonna run into insects. Another important tool, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, well, everybody has that, so why even mention it? But paper towels are very important and useful. Um, they're useful for putting into kill jars and also Ziploc bags. So I love using Ziploc bags for insects. You can see I've got a little bit of materials in here from other collecting trips. 
I just love it because you can fit tons of insects in there. The paper towels give insects something to grab onto so they're not flying around and damaging each other or hurting each other. So, you know, just putting that into the Ziploc bag will give them something to cling onto. And then the same thing with the kill jars. The insects will be able to hold on to something. And if you've got a little bit of excess chemical in there, it can kind of soak that up and keep it from getting directly onto the insects. As for the Ziploc bags, I think the best size is about a gallon bag. That might even also be too big, but I'd at least go with a quart. I wouldn't just use a normal sandwich bag. The key thing with that is you want one that's pretty big so you can fit a lot of insects, a lot of plant material, because you'll get a lot of that while you're sweeping with the nets. And you want it to be big enough so that when you try to turn your net inside out inside of it, it's going to be pretty easy to get it into there. So, just like that. Another tool that I think is essential is a hammer. You could just get a small hammer like this one. You could also get what is called a wonder bar, I believe. Other types of prying tools like a crowbar type thing. And those are great for going into rotting logs to collect insects. If you haven't watched that video yet, that's one of the most popular ones I have. Check it out over here. But I really like hammers a lot and you're not really caring much about the front. You're going to use this part right here to rip into logs to find lots of cool larvae, grubs, all sorts of things. There's just all sorts of cool stuff you can find inside of rotting logs. So I really love having a good hammer. The other thing that I think is essential is having a nice bag so you can carry all this stuff around with you. I like this bag. This is a shoulder type bag. I also use this sometimes for carrying around cameras. But I can fit most of my stuff in here. I can have it around my shoulder and then anytime if I need to I can whip it open, unzip it, pull out my kill jar, you know, throw my insects inside of it and then let them kind of just sit here with me as I carry them around. Or you never know when I might need my hammer, you know. This thing will even fit the hammer in it if you get it in there right. So I've got all my tools so I'm out moving in the field but I don't want a huge bulky backpack that I have to carry around that's really heavy because I'm usually out in the field moving long distances, going on hikes, trying to find a bunch of insects. So that is very helpful. To get a nice bag like this so you can carry your stuff around with you, it's probably going to cost you around 20 bucks. So, so in my mind, these are the essential materials that you need to start insect collecting. There are other things too. What do you guys think that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to stay tuned where big adventures start small.